Stay tuned for Nero Wolf Transcribed. Later this evening, the unique Mr. Monty Woolley stars once again in the new comedy series, The Magnificent Montague, the delightful saga of an embittered Shakespearean ham. After many triumphant years on the stage, The Magnificent Montague now portrays Uncle Goodhart, the hero of a radio serial. And his trials and tribulations are 30 minutes of delightful listening over most of these NBC stations. And today being Friday means another visit to Duffy's Tavern, where Archie the manager presides over another sparkling session of mischief and madness. Ladies and gentlemen, the ringing of that phone bell means adventure. Hello? Hello? The young man answering the phone is Archie Goodwin. Yes, this is Nero Wolf's office. The mountain of a man in the oversized armchair staring at Archie with a beady eye is Nero Wolf. Mr. Wolf is in. Mr. Wolf is always in. Would he stay in until... He would. Archie, what on earth? Boss, she sounds blonde. Phooey. Don't believe I can tell over the phone? Okay. Excuse me, miss, but are you blonde? Oh. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Wolf will see you. Goodbye. I did not say. No, but you will. Besides, she wasn't blonde. And I want you to see red. Oh, Archie, you better think of some new ones. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the bulkiest, balkiest, smartest, and most unpredictable detective in the world. That chair-born genius, Nero Wolfe, created by Rex Stout and brought to you in a new series of adventures over this NBC network in the person of Mr. Sidney Greenstreet. <laughs> It's the case of the girl who cried wolf. In the old brownstone house on 35th Street, my boss, Nero Wolf, with all his 300 pounds, sits at his desk from which he runs his world. We have been patiently waiting for the lady client. Then there's a knock at the door, and I admit her. A beautiful, frightened, and red-headed girl. Mr. Wolf? Mr. Nero Wolf? Not by 160 pounds. I'm Archie Goodwin. Oh, yes. I spoke to you on the phone. I'm... I'm Mary Dunning, Mr. Goodwin. I was wondering if... He's in. He's always in. Come on. We'll try getting him to admit it. This is Mr. Wolf. Miss Mary Dunning. How do you do, Miss Dunning? Here, take this red leather chair. It's a nice match for your hair. You know, as old Dr. Tidmouse has said to me, beware of a red-headed woman. But I never could believe... Thank you, Mr. Goodwin. Your business, Miss Dunning... Do you mean what I do or or why I've come to you? Both, if you please. Well, I'm Mr. Stevens' secretary at the Tolliver Ecological Foundation. Our offices are down on East 12th Street. Uh, ecological? Fear research as to factors operating on plant and animal development and survival, Archie. Animal development, huh? Miss Dunning, the foundation has several agricultural research projects throughout the country, hasn't it? That's right, Mr. Wolfe. And Donald Stevens is executive director. Or was until... Was? He's disappeared. It's been three days now. He's not been near the office, nor his apartment. No message or... Apartment? Stevens been living alone? He's a bachelor. He's engaged to Laura Tolliver. She's a cousin of the original Tollivers. But she doesn't know where he is either. Have you come to me on Laura Tolliver's account or on behalf of the foundation? Well... Well, neither, Mr. Wolfe. I'm just worried, and and I'd heard of you as one of the finest private detectives in New York. You heard of me, Miss Dunning. We see that you're here. I still fail to understand why. But I've told you. Mr. Stevens has dropped out of sight. And there's another thing. The last time I saw him, he had a caller with him in his office. Caller? Male? Female? I don't know. We're in a converted old brownstone house, and... Well, the way the offices are laid out... I don't see all the people who come in unless they make a point of coming to my desk. Mm hmm. I see. All I know is that Mr. Stevens stepped out for a moment, looking either scared or angry, I couldn't be sure which, and asked me to see if there was a policeman at the corner. Which corner? <laughs> Archie, 
Continue, Miss Denny. Well, I started to go, and there were low voices arguing from the inner office. And then Mr. Stevens called me not to bother. Nilman. He said I could go ahead and take my lunch hour then. So I did. And when I came back, he was gone. Leaving no message? Leaving no message. And you've neither seen or heard of him since? I've tried all over. By phone, going out myself. Miss Dunning, has Mr. Stevens been in the habit of making extended business trips? Well, once in a while to our research stations in Pennsylvania or New Jersey or up in Vermont, but not without letting me know. I have to make out his travel vouchers. Has there been any recent trouble at the foundation? Trouble? Financial trouble? Personal trouble? No, there's been no trouble. Miss Dunning, you're wasting my time and yours. This is a problem for the police, if there is a problem. Oh, oh no, Mr. Wolf. I, I'd have gone to the police, except, well, if there should be an innocent explanation, it didn't seem fair to the foundation to risk the unpleasant publicity. I of... said for the police. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Wolf. It's your say so, but when a girl walks in here and asks. A young to... lady can depart by the use of the same rather trim legs that carried her here, Archie. Oh, now, look, boss, just because Miss I. Miss at... Dunning. I can think of a dozen reasons that might take your bachelor director out of town for a few days without the formality of explaining his actions. Then you won't look into this? Despite Mr. Goodwin's frowns, no. Should Mr. Stevens not turn up tomorrow or so, I suggest you advise the police or whatever attorney acts for the foundation. There is such a person, of course. Yes. Jonas Dowd is counsel. He's also a coat trustee. Consult him then, by all means. But you don't seem to understand. Hey, if you'll excuse me, I'm overdue for an important conference with my cook. We have just received a shipment of truffles from France. Well, of course, if Mr. I... Mr. Wolf, if you ask me... Precisely I... what I have refrained from doing, Archie. Would you be good enough to escort Miss Dunning to the door? To the door, Archie. Good night, Miss Dunning. Good night. Good night. And thanks, just the same. Look, Mr. Wolf, it's your shop, and you can get as surly as you please. But can you give me one excuse for that high-handed brush? One thin shred of an excuse? Miss Dunning was sitting in the this chair... The girl was lying, Archie. Lying? How can you say At that? At least you... twice. And possibly from the moment she opened that undeniably pretty mouth. Now, if you'll excuse me, Archie, I have an appointment with a truffle. <laughs> So you have a surprise for me, Archie. Enough to yank you three inches out of that chair. Remember the girl who was here last night, Mary Dunning? You seem unwilling to let me forget her. Well, I took off on my own this morning to check up on that foundation setup. Good, Archie. I ventured a small bet with Fritz that you would. All right. See if your bet included this. I found Stevens down there right in his office. Missing executive director. Yes, and the missing Mr. Stevens claimed he had just been on a business trip. Delayed getting back because his car had been smacked by a hit-and-run driver in New Jersey. Now, here's the payoff. He even tried to make out that he'd been thinking of calling you in on a problem. A hit-and-run accident? No, no, something about the foundation. But I didn't waste time letting him cloud it up for us. The point is... Archie, that... you brought him here, of course. Stevens? No, he's still down there. We'll want to grab him before the day is out, but I had something more important to run down first. It took me three calls on the way up here, but you can take it as confirmed. We've still got a disappearance case, and this one you're not sitting out. Indeed. And who has disappeared now? Mary Dunning. Stevens is back, but Mary's gone. Not at the office, not at her rooming house, and none of her clothes are taken. How'd you get going? Put a police call out on Mary. Back to 12th Street and get Stevens out of that office and up here as fast as you can. I'll phone him. You are on the way. <laughs> Hello? This Donald Stevens? Yes, this is Donald Stevens. It's Nero Wolf. I understand you've been thinking of consulting me. Well, as a matter of fact, I have, Mr. Wolf. I started to explain to Mr. Goodwin, but... Uh... Now you're alone there at the office. Why, well, yes, as it happens... Be careful. I don't think your car smashed up was an accident. And I've just sent Mr. Goodwin to ask you to come here. Meanwhile, I'd suggest... Oh, excuse me, Mr. Wolf. There seems to be someone coming in now. Wait, Mr. Stevens. There hasn't been time for Archie to get there yet. Excuse me, Mr. Wolf. Don't. Just hold the wire a moment. Wait, Mr. Stevens. Uh, come on in. I haven't had a chance yet. Oh, what? No! No! Oh, 
And that's all Inspector Kramer has been able to make of it, Archie? Not to hear him tell it, but that's all he's got. Stephen dead and the girl still missing. Did you find anything helpful at the office? I think the murderer started to tear up some account books and project ledgers, but I must have scared him away when I rang the bell. Couldn't have been more than three or four minutes after the shooting when I got there. But you saw no one? Hmm. The murderer can cover a lot of ground in three or four minutes. You were naturally, by accident, it is mildly illegal. You had a good look at the dead man? A very good look. Not to mention his pockets. Anything particular? Well, there was a half-eaten package of lifesavers in the left-hand trouser pocket. What's particular about that? The flavor was lime. I hate lime. Fooey. <laughs> Archie, I uh, called Jonas Dowd last night. The foundation lawyer? Yes, he set up the original charter under which Donald Stevens operated with an annual fund of $90,000. The ecology has its attractions. 90,000 attractions, to be precise. It indicates a possible reason for Stevens' murder. He was in sole charge of that money. Somebody donated three thirty-eight caliber bullets to him. Hardly a token of appreciation. Perhaps not. However, the shooting followed the attempt to stage an automobile accident. Archie, I sent Saul Panza on an errand for me. Saul, huh? He's expensive. True, he's the best man in the shadow job there is. You've got something, huh? Possibility. An angle I can't handle? Apart from your natural preference for curves, you more than work enough here in New York. Finding Mary Dunning for a starter. Or uh, her body? Or her body, as it may be. Is that what Saul's on, picking up a line on Mary? Among other chores, Saul is buying me some special groceries at the city market. You frown, Archie. I glower, but okay, play it cozy. You can send Saul off to Stockholm for smorgasbord for all I care. I'm still asking, what about Stevens and what about Mary? Where do we start? I'm expecting Laura Tolliver, the heiress and the son of Jonas Dowd here within a few minutes. Jonas Dowd himself proved as difficult to pry from the office as... As you generally are from this one. Oh, good for old Jonas. Wait a minute, though. You said a son was coming. Would that be Peter Dowd? It would be. Could I trouble you to pass that second bottle of beer? It's your third. Stop auditing me, Archie. You reacted to the name of Peter Dowd. May I ask why? Kramer is ahead of you on that pitch. He's had Peter Dowd downtown already. And learn? Playboy, used to be in love with Laura Tolliver, now in line to take over Stephen's tidy 20000 a year salary as executive director. Take over, fooey. Peter Dowd's no ecologist. He's got more important qualifications. His old man and Laura Tolliver are co-trustees under the Tolliver will, and the director can be anybody they name. Archie, you sound prejudiced against young Mr. Dowd. Yeah, that's what Kramer said. I'm just naturally suspicious of anybody who stood to pick up 20 grand a year, plus a whack at the 90,000 a year in house money, just by throwing 338 caliber slugs into Stevens. Particularly after getting rid of Mary Dunning to clear the way. The police still have no leads on Miss Dunning? A for effort, Z for results. Now, the way I see it, boss. Leg work now, Archie. Guess it's later. You might try Miss Dunning's landlady again for one, and try Peter Dowd's apartment. Now? Yes. I'd say go along, keep after the missing girl. Instead of sifting through the names in Stephen's appointment book you were asking about? It's two legs of the same animal. The names may help on the girl. Now, Archie, on your way. Come in. Mr. Wolf? Yes, come in, Mr. Oliver, Mr. Dowd. Sit down. Yep. It's good of you both to come. Miss Tolliver, I'm profoundly sorry of your loss. You were to marry Mr. Stevens, as I understand it. Yes, three weeks from today. I was trying to warn poor Stevens just as the murderer came in. But he evidently knew his caller well enough to feel no alarm. The uh, police told us that, Mr. Wolfe. We've just come from Inspector Kramer's office. I know, Mr. Dowd. Did you gather the inspector meant to see you again? Why should he? How could anyone think that, well, that, that Peter could have anything to do with this, this horrible business? I see that you have no doubts about Mr. Dowd here, Mr. Oliver. Easy, Laura. Yes, Mr. Wolf, I, I gathered that Kramer was interested in me. He's got a man outside here watching us now. You're alert, Mr. Dowd, or... Of what? Or aware that Inspector Kramer may have grounds for keeping you under surveillance. 
Look, Mr. Wolf, I didn't come here to be put through the jumps again. First Kramer, and now you. I'm acting for the daughter of a foundation, Mr. Dowd. I have been since your father retained me last night. Well, why jump on me, then? Young man in my age and weight, the chances of my jumping on anyone are about as likely as, uh, well, as unlikely as to expect that you are not still in love with Miss Laura Tolliver here. Yeah. Mr. Wolf, we haven't admitted that, that we... Miss Tolliver, Miss Tolliver, your concern a moment ago at the possibility that this young man might be charged with Stephen's murder... Now, wait a minute, Mr. Wolf. Climb back on me if you want, but let Laura alone. If you're trying to, to make... I'm no longer trying, Mr. Dowd. You both confirmed the point for me. All right. I am still in love with Laura. I think Laura's known ever since she accepted Stephen's ring that, her... well, that their engagement was a mistake. What are you going to make of that? Did Stevens know you hadn't given up on Laura? I told him twice. I even went down to the foundation and just... Just when, Mr. Dowd? This morning while I was telephoned Stevens, for example? I... I... I haven't been near the foundation office for days. I, I've... Well, I, I've been out of town. Mr. Wolf, you've no right to twist and turn everything Peter says. I do love him, but I... Laura. Oh, that's, that's the first time you've come right out with it since... I'm sorry, Peter. I've wanted to tell you a thousand times. But, well, you kept going away on all those trips, and I never knew whether it was for some other girl or... <clears throat> Mr. Dowd, Miss Tolliver, could this tender exchange be postponed till you two find yourselves alone? Go ahead, Mr. Wolf. Ask anything you want, as long as I know it's all right with Laura here. Well, he's spoken, Mr. Dowd. May I ask about Mary? Ma What's Mary Dunning got to do with this? I'm glad you're aware of the Mary I meant. Well, well, I, I, I've met her at the foundation, of course. We've all heard she's missing. You couldn't suggest where she might be. How would Peter know? Let's return to Mr. Stevens. Can either of you explain his three days' absence from the city? Well, I've been out of town myself. Mr. Oliver? He could have been inspecting any one of the research plants. He didn't tell me, if that's what you mean. Stevens said this morning he had been wanting to consult me. You can't suggest why? Well, no, I can't. About foundation business or personal business? Three thirty-eight caliber bullets kept Mr. Stevens from making that clear, Mr. Oliver. Mr. Dowd's father is sending me over some material, but as yet, it's not in my hands. Are you familiar with the personnel at the research stations? There aren't any more than four or five project managers. Halsey in Vermont, Schwartzdown, Pennsylvania. Excuse me. You hear a wolf? Archie. Yes, Archie. You can take it back about Mary Dunning. If she's a liar, she's just gone to a lot of trouble to make it look good. Did? No, but knocked out with chloroform and stuffed in a closet in a man's apartment... And uh, guess whose apartment? Spare me your charades, Archie. Peter Dowd's. That's where I'm calling from. Is he still with you? As it happens, yes. Better hang on to him. There's been another development. Inspector Kramer's got hold of a man named Schwartz. The Pennsylvania project manager. Right. Schwartz was at the foundation office this morning, and he says Peter Dowd was going in as he came out. When? Within minutes of your call to Stevens. Kramer's on his way to your place now to pick up young Dowd. Any uh, instructions? I'd like more company. Well, the ball game is all wrapped up, isn't it? I'd still like more company. Right, Mary and Schwartz? If you can get them here, and Archie. Yes? Get them here. I'll have that fifth bottle of beer, Archie. Seventh and quarter for the night. And when do you get around to calling in Mary and our friend Schwartz? In a moment, Archie, in a moment. After all that scramble to get him here. I've been studying these project reports that Jonas Dowd sent over. Fascinating field ecology. I know. The factors playing on the development and survival of living organisms. Too bad poor Stevens didn't figure on a factor named Peter Dowd. Archie, I'm ready for Mr. Schwartz now. No Mary? I'll risk you in the next room with Miss Dunning for the time being. Okay. One Schwartz coming up. Oh, come in, Mr. Schwartz. Mr. Wolf? How do you do, Mr. Schwartz? My apologies for this long wait you've had. And I'll try to make our business brief. Yes, sir. Mr. Schwartz, you managed the Tolliver Agricultural Research Station in Pennsylvania for some time. Two years. I am not sure I didn't once enjoy a shipment of mushrooms that came from your place. You've experimented with Maya Arenaria. Maya Arenaria? Yes, of course. Yes, we've done some work with mushrooms. They were excellent. Uh, by the way, I understand 
You saw Mr. Stevens just before he was shot down. If I'd stayed ten minutes longer, he might still be alive. May I ask the purpose of your call? I was delivering the monthly reports. No special trouble you came to discuss? No, sir. You met Peter Dowd coming in at the foundation as you were going out. How did he look? In a hurry. How so? He just pushed past with his face turned away. You're sure it was he? Yes, I had seen him at the foundation maybe two or three times before. Were you aware that Mr. Stevens and Mr. Dowd were both apparently in love with the same young lady? I'm a research worker, Mr. Wolf. I wouldn't know about Mr. Stevens' personal affairs. Just an hour ago, before Inspector Kramer took him from here, young Dowd admitted that he'd been there today. I didn't think I could be mistaken. But he said only because Stevens had phoned him to come. Were you there when that call was made? No, there was no call to Dowd while I was there. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Swartz. Yes, Nero Wolf speaking. This is Saul Penza. Yes, Saul, you're still... Yes, yeah, still down here at the city market. Looks as if you were right. Indeed? One of their trucks just pulled in with a load of full crates. Top quality produce. I'll uh, try not to wince when you send in the expense sheets. Any other confirmation? Internal revenue records show no taxes paid on income by the Tolliver Foundation. Thank you, Saul. Phone any information as you get it. You'll forgive me again, Mr. Swartz. Archie! Yes, boss? Could you ask Miss Dunning to step in now? Coming up. Come in now, Miss Dunning. Good evening, Miss Dunning. You've quite recovered from the chloroform? Mr. Goodwin's been helping me. He's been rubbing my forehead, and I'm beginning Spare to... me get... any further details. Miss Dunning, would you mind telling me again how it was you came to find yourself in Mr. Dowd's apartment? Well... It was the phone call that got me to go over. It was a man whispering. He didn't give his name, but he said if I came to that address, apartment 4C, I could learn something about Mr. Stevens. You went to apartment 4C, and then? That's really all I know. Just after the door opened, before I could see him, this coat was thrown over my head, and then he must have given me the chloroform. It was Peter Dowd, of course. Dowd? Who else could it have been? It could have been Mr. Swartz here. Yeah? Mr. Wolf, you're joking. Am I, Swartz? Joking or drunk? Why should I... Uh... For the ancient reason, Swartz. Money. For the racket you had and wanted to keep. Racket? Mr. Swartz was in... Swartz is no more of an ecologist than Mr. Goodwin here. A moment ago, he accepted Myra Arenaria as a mushroom. It happens to be a common clam. Common on nearly any beach. Rare in inland Pennsylvania. And Stevens knew I didn't go in for all that Latin stuff. I could understand that you might be useful without it, Swartz. But to get away from your station operations, you faked the scientific knowledge you never had. All right. Suppose I am more of a farmer than a fancy scientist. Our job at the research station is to raise vegetable crops, isn't it? As you worked it, Swartz, of course. You turned an agricultural research project into a commercial farm. All expenses met from tax-free funds and not a cent of return shown for the produce sold. So that's why Saul Panzer drew the rutabagus run. Stephen had the innocence of a specialist interested in his own field only. But even Stevens finally began to get on to those doctored reports of your sports. And when was it the Internal Revenue men began asking questions? Look, Goodwin, is this fat guy out of his mind? You had to get rid of Stevens after the last inspection trip. Were you even counting on taking over his job after Peter Dowd was put away for Stephen's murder? Merely, if you'll just explain to this lunatic... Watch it, Archie, watch it. Oh. I've got his gun. Droidly done, Archie. Now, wait a minute. This is a thirty-two, and it was a thirty-eight that did the murder. Mr. Wolf, that's my bag. You can't... Take this pistol from it. I have, my dear. And this extraordinary effort you put me to of actually leaving my chair to secure this weapon, we'll add that to the score against you. Mr. Wolf, if you aren't too tuckered to answer that gun from Mary's bag. It's a 38. It may be the one used on Stevens. But Mary couldn't. She didn't. The ballistics tells us that this is the weapon. Then Swartz must have passed it to her for safekeeping. Till it could be planted in young Dowd's apartment or car or whatever. I didn't have anything to do with it. Miss Dunning, you had to do it more than you know. Do you realize that if Mr. Goodwin hadn't found you at the Dowd apartment when he did, that you might not be alive at this moment? You were the one person who knew Swartz's crime. Mary, don't listen to him. She's listening, Swartz. Miss Dunning, you thought the chloroform scheme was directed solely against Peter Dowd. 
And so you let Swartz talk you into it. Mr. Goodwin tells me the door of that closet was sealed with scotch tape. I didn't know that. Schwartz actually tried... Your chloroform sleep was meant to turn into a permanent one, Miss Dunning. And I was trying to cover for him. All right, here it is. Schwartz planned it all. He did try the hit and run, and he did shoot Stephen. He's a liar. Mary, you've been juggling those books since... Say the details for Inspector Kramer, Schwartz. There's guilt enough to be divided between you and guilt enough to burn you both. All right, you're being noble and not rubbing it in. Don't I merit a full explanation? Archie, I am concentrating on truffles. Do we dig out a bird or shall we have them in an omelet again? Mr. Wolf, look, I've got a white flag up and I'm asking. All right, Mary and Schwartz wanted Stevens out of the way. And all right, they tried to hang it on Peter Dowd. But why'd Mary come here and try to get you into it in the first place? As far as she knew that night, Archie, Stevens wasn't to get back to New York alive. Swartz's hit-and-run ambush in New Jersey was supposed to take care of Stevens on his way back from Pennsylvania. By luck, Stevens survived the accident, and Swartz had to follow him here to finish him off. Yes, but I still don't see why... Mary came here to establish her innocence by pretending to seek our help. Oh. And she thought to keep suspicion from Swartz by creating the imaginary figure of a threatening caller at the office several days before. She knew Stevens meant to consult me about Swartz, and she could guess Jonas Dowd would call me in eventually. Well, Stephen said he wanted to consult you that morning when I... That morning when you couldn't hear Stevens out because you were seeing him as Mary Dunning wanted us to see him. Oh, a trick operated with two vanishing acts to explain. Stevens's and Mary's. There you have it, Archie. And both fake. A straight business trip branded a run out or a snatch only by Mary's account, and then the chloroform act at Dowd's apartment. You have it in full. Mm-hmm. Except how you knew she was lying to start with. Point one, the girl offered no fee, no prospect of a fee. Mm-hmm, stay at that. Could anyone claim knowledge of my reputation, Archie, and still seriously expect that I would take an arduous labor for the love of it? <laughs> oh, hmm. I'm ashamed of myself. Point two, she told us of a caller coming to see Stevens, of Stevens asking her to fetch a policeman, then changing his mind. When asked to call a policeman, what woman's curiosity would be satisfied by being told not to bother? <laughs> How utterly brilliant you are. Hmm, yes. Archie, a bottle of beer. All right. And now back to a serious problem, you know. I think they see a compromise on these troubles. Between bird and omelet? Archie, why not both? Ah! You have been listening to The New Adventures of Nero Wolf, starring Sidney Greenstreet. Tonight's transcribed story by Charles O'Neill was based on the characters created by Rex Stout. This is an Edwin Fadiman program produced and directed by J. Donald Wilson. In the cast were Larry Dobkin as Archie Goodwin and Charlotte Lawrence, Howard McNear, Mona Keneally, Lamont Johnson, and Herb Butterfield. Next week at this same time, Nero Wolfe and Archie will bring you The Case of the Slaughtered Santa Clauses. Don Stanley speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. There's no cover charge at Duffy's Tavern. Just keep your dial tuned to NBC later as Archie the manager and his delightful friends cook up another mad and merry session at that remarkable restaurant, Duffy's Tavern.